Recently, I did a quick poll of some Affinity Photo users. 97% of respondents admitted to being confused by Affinity at some point. In this video, I'll explain some of the common problems and how you can avoid falling into the same traps. The first area of confusion for most new Affinity Photo users is the personas. There are five of these which you can access through the icons in the top left of the toolbar. Each persona is designed for a specific purpose. For example, the Liquify persona has tools for distorting objects or areas of an image. What many new users find confusing is that the layout of each persona is different, but somehow vaguely similar. Then when they look more closely, they find the studio panels and tools in each persona are very different. When you're new to Affinity Photo, this can make it appear far more complex than it really is. What you need to understand is that each persona displays only the tools and panels for its design purpose. Notice in the Liquify persona that the tools relate to deforming areas of the image, which is the purpose of that persona. What you don't see are tools like the Rectangular Marquee tool from the Photo persona because you don't need them. Equally, if we switch to the Export persona, you don't see tools from the Liquify persona there. But here's the thing. Whilst the different personas in Affinity Photo are helpful, you don't need them most of the time. In fact, you can do all your editing using only the default photo persona. The only exception is if you want to edit a RAW file rather than an image. When you open a RAW file in Affinity Photo, you'll find yourself automatically in the develop persona rather than the default photo persona. That's because the develop persona is the only persona where you can edit a RAW file, but again, this is a source of confusion for users. Now there is another area of confusion which happens when trying to access the different personas. Let's say you want to edit this image using the develop persona. When I try to open it, I get an error message saying that I must select an RGB pixel layer before entering develop. That's because Affinity Photo can have different types of layers in an image, but only pixel layers can be edited in some of the personas. Pixel layers are the ones that contain an image or part of an image and that are made up of pixels. Another type of layer is the adjustment layer like a curves layer, and this doesn't have any pixels. If you don't have a pixel layer selected before switching to the develop persona, you get the error message. To avoid the error message, select a pixel layer to edit in the Layers Studio panel before switching personas. Now let's look more closely at the Affinity Photo Persona layout. Chances are, your copy of Affinity Photo doesn't look like mine, because mine's been customised for this video. When new users see these differences, they often jump to the conclusion that it's due to the version of the software that I'm using. This is a mistake, and it's more likely the difference is down to changes you can make to your own interface. If we look at the Affinity Photo view menu, there's a studio option with a complete list of panels. This is where we can hide or display different panels by clicking them. Notice the tick mark to the left of some of the panels in this list. That tells us these panels are visible in the interface. If we click one of these, say the Assets panel, it's then hidden in the display. But it isn't only the individual panels we can hide or display. The areas to the left and right of the screen which hold the groups of panels can also be hidden. These are called the left and right studios. Using the view menu, we can hide either the left or right studio area, which then hides all the panels docked there. This flexibility can cause a lot of confusion for new users, but perhaps not as much as the next feature. Affinity Photo allows us to arrange the visible studio panels by clicking and dragging. For example, I can drag the macro panel and dock it with the histogram at the top of the screen. And if you're wondering why my histogram panel is on the left and yours is perhaps on the right, it's because I've moved mine. I can even drag panels to form new groups in the left and right studios. Fortunately, if you find yourself in a mess, you can reset your interface to the default in the view menu. Much of what you see in the Affinity Photo interface is customizable. Please don't make the mistake of thinking your software must be a different version. It's more likely to be that a setting's been changed. The Color Studio panel is a great example of this. By using the list at the top of the panel, we can change the slider options and each looks different. But even that isn't the end of our choices. There's also a menu to the top right of the panels where we can select other options for the current panel. If I pick the wheel option rather than the slider view, the panel now looks completely different. 
With all these options for customization, I doubt anyone watching this video will have the same layout as me. Now let's look at the toolbar along the top of the Affinity Photo interface. Does your toolbar look like mine? Perhaps yours is showing the text as well as the icons. Or perhaps you just see different icons to me. That's entirely possible because I've customised my toolbar for the features I use most. You can easily do this yourself by right clicking the toolbar and choosing the customise option. You can then drag and drop the icons for the features you want to arrange them in the toolbar. If you decide you want to reset the toolbar, there's a default toolbar set at the bottom of the dialog you can use. Just drag and drop this as you would with any other icon. Let's now turn our attention to the filters because these are another source of confusion. It's probably best to demonstrate a common problem by sharpening the image with the Unsharp Mask filter. I'll start by selecting the Consolidated Image layer because the filter only affects pixel layers. If you try to apply it to an adjustment layer like the Curves layer, it doesn't do anything. Now I can apply the filter by clicking the Filter Sharpen menu option. I'll move the Factor slider to the far right to make it easier to see the effect. Now notice these icons to the bottom right of the dialog. We can use them to help judge the effect of the sharpening. For example, I can switch to the split screen mode. When I'm happy with the filter settings, I can click the apply button. This applies the adjustment I made directly to the pixels of the layer. What many users fail to realise is that this is a destructive edit, meaning you can't change the settings you've applied. Let's try opening the Unsharp Mask filter again in the menu to reduce the strength of the sharpening. When the dialog opens, it looks like it's remembered my settings, so I'll reduce them and click the Apply button again. But what's happened is that I've applied additional sharpening to the image, not reduced it. You can see this if I move back through the editing history. The problem occurred because I used regular filters from the Filter menu. These filters directly change the pixels on the layer, and once applied, you can't refine them. If you want to adjust your settings, you need to use a live filter layer rather than a regular filter. You'll find the live filter layers in the Layers menu, which contains many of the same adjustments as the Filters menu. Then when I choose the Live Filter version of the Unsharp Mask, the adjustment controls look the same, which can also be confusing. The only immediate difference is that we don't have the comparison icons at the bottom left of the dialog and there isn't an apply button. If I make an adjustment and close the dialog, the Live Filter layer appears as a new layer in the Layers Studio panel. You can see it attached to the layer it's adjusting. Then, when I double click the Live Filter, it opens the dialog and this time I can adjust my settings. If you don't understand the difference between live filters and regular filters, Affinity Photo can seem very confusing. It's also easy to make a mistake by applying the wrong type. In most cases, it's better to use a live filter rather than a regular filter because it's non-destructive and you can continue to adjust your settings. The next area of confusion for users is one we touched on earlier, which is the tools palettes in the different personas. Besides each persona having different sets of tools, there are two more problems you can run into. The first is that some of the tools are grouped, but you only see one of the icons from the group. If you look below some of the icons in my tools palette, you can see a small grey triangle. When I click this rather than selecting that tool, Affinity Photo shows the other tools from the group. I can then select any of these tools and that icon then appears in the tools palette. This is one reason your tools palette might look different to mine, but there's also another that can cause confusion. There are many more tools in each persona than are displayed and you can customise this display. Click the view menu and select the customise tools option to see the complete list. You can then click and drag tools to add tools to the palette, as well as clicking and dragging to remove them. You can also arrange the tools into multiple columns using the drop down at the bottom of the panel. If you find you get into a mess with the tools, you can click the reset button at the bottom. Ultimately, it's the customization and flexibility of Affinity Photo that's confusing new users. Now, if you want to know how to take more control over your Affinity Photo layout, you need to watch this video next. It explains how to create your own custom layouts that you can quickly switch between.